Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the shop again. We are finally getting a little bit of time to rebuild this GM uh, SM465, which we're going to mate to a Jeep Model 18 transfer case. And this whole assembly is going to go behind our Cummins 4BT, which is going in the uh, CJ3B welder Jeep. Uh, the project has uh, changed a little bit. I am now uh, building a custom frame for it as well because I want a little bit more room in there and I want the uh, 4BT to fit comfortably in there. So we'll make some custom fenders and custom hood for it and everything. Uh, but right now, it's been a long time coming, uh, we're going to get going on this 465 and I'm going to show you uh, how I go about doing it. Uh, I see a lot of guys go at these with hammers and screwdrivers and chisels and stuff and uh, I'll try and uh, <clears throat> show you how I like to do it and maybe save you some grief uh, this unit is out of a late 70's I believe it's a 79 uh, GMC truck uh, like I say two wheel drive doesn't matter two wheel drive four wheel drive uh, different spline counts don't get hung up on that uh, you can make any 465 work. Uh, I've already loosened this nut, this lock nut here. Sometimes they could be a bear. Uh, before you get started, if you have a two-wheel drive unit, you need an inch and 13 16 socket. So, um, that could sometimes be a bear. But, uh, I just went after it with a DeWalt. Um, but you need some, you need an impact gun on that. Uh, I've got this in two different gears so it doesn't spin. Uh, it, it's very tight. Uh, you'll chase it around the bench if you use a uh, just a ratchet. So if you have an impact gun, get yourself a 1 and 13 16 socket and go after that. So uh, we'll get started. In the back, we'll take apart, we'll take this yoke off, we'll go after these bolts and stuff, pull that off, and, uh, and then we'll head to the front and... Uh, I'll show you a few different tools. So hang in there with me. Uh, we'll get tearing into this right now. It's just a real thin nut, so make sure you have the right size oh, socket. These I don't usually ever have any trouble with coming off. They should just pull right off like that. Um, if you have to, uh, you can get a puller on there if it's stuck. Uh, but they usually come right off. And um, these bolts, this whole back cap is going to come off. And if we were just rebuilding the 465, we would use this. But since we're adapting it to the, uh, the Jeep transfer case, we're going to take this off and just put it to the side because we're not going to use it again. Okay guys, we just zipped out those eight bolts. And if you're, um, if you're again, if you're using it, if you're rebuilding the 465 to go in your truck again, uh, make sure you seal those bolts. These were sealed from the factory. You don't want any gear oil leaking out of there. So make sure you seal all those eight bolts if you're going to use this plate again. Okay, there's the plate and on the two-wheel drive truck there's your speedo gear and there it is here again we're not going to need any of that for the application that we're using this for so we'll just put that aside so this bearing well basically all the need all the bearings are gonna have to come out but um, uh, this guy on the uh, on the cluster on the bottom uh, needs to come out. But we're going to go after the, the front one first. Okay. We're going to take this plate off. I cleaned it up already. There's a lot of grime on there. These bolts 
These are screws. They usually come out real good because they've been in... Um, they've had oil behind them most of their life. So they'll come right out. And there's a bearing behind here. And if you have the factory service manual or you have a... Or you've watched guys rebuild these, you probably see them have a hard time getting that out. Okay, I think you can see that. Let me try and get you in there a little better. That lower bearing has really gotten the best of a lot of guys. Now, in the book, in the factory book, they tell you to go in here with a couple screwdrivers get behind there and just pop that out um, I have never ever seen that work I've never known anybody that's gotten two screwdrivers in there and got that thing out you got to fit to your case and you got to fit on your shaft here you'll never get those out you'll break your screwdrivers you'll, you'll have a, a real mess the next thing guys do when they can't get that out is they start to break this apart they just start beating on the bearing with a hammer and stuff. Um, I don't recommend that, and I don't like to do it that way. Um, so let me... Okay, I think you can see that okay. Um, <clears throat> now this is what I have for a tool. Um, basically you almost have all your parts in oops, if you have the OTC slide hammer kit, which I know a lot of guys probably do the 7948, um, you're gonna have most of your pieces in there. And you see I've got two jaws missing out of this set here. These are a little too wide to get in there, so I just um, ground down the edges. Um, let's go over to the tool. And you've got, in your case, you've got this spreader. These pins just come out of another puller kit I got. Um, the pressure screw comes out of that case. You can see here where they're ground down. And then this guy keeps them spread so they don't so they don't move again uh, when you're pulling it. So uh, let's try and get that in there, and I'll show you how I pull that front bearing uh, safely and cleanly, and, and not beating up the case at all. So let me get set up for that. Okay, I'll try and show you this without getting in the way. We're just going to send these jaws in there. That's a real thick bearing, so you really got to get them in there. And they're hooked basically on the back of the bearing. I'm just going to take this up just a little bit. This screw, we're going to screw that down and it's tapered. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep the, the jaws from sliding off the bearing. Make that nice and tight. Okay, and then we got our our setup there, and uh, I think you can see that. All right, we got our setup. We're just going to get on that with the impact gun, and and we're going to pull that uh, that bearing right out of there. Uh, let me try and get to maybe a side shot. It'll be better. I don't know. Let me, uh, let me get the impact gun set up and I'll try and get a better camera angle for you. Okay guys, this bearing could be a real pain to get out. Um, the tool didn't, didn't want to stay closed. There was enough spring in the jaws to, to come out from around the back of the bearing. So what I have on there is my chain vice grip. Uh, sometimes you need an extra little something to keep those jaws 
uh, <clears throat> from spreading. Um, Ninety percent of the time this tool does it. This is a very old transmission. It's never been serviced or anything, so uh, it's giving me a little trouble. The chain vice grip is going to keep the jaws, give it that extra little bit of uh, bite so they won't spread. And uh, let's try and pull that out now. Okay guys, that is the fastest and safest way I know to pull this front bearing out. Um, you can spend a lot of time beating that thing with a hammer and chisel and you're just not doing your transmission any good. Uh, it doesn't take much to put that type of puller together uh, and that's going to help you tremendously uh, get this out and uh, keep it in one piece. Like I say, you're never going to get in these slots and pry that out with a uh, with a screwdriver. So if you're seeing that in your manual or your your book or whatever, um, don't even pay any attention to that because it's just not going to work for you. So we got that front one out. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to uh, flip it around, and I'll show you how I get that back bearing out. Okay, guys, here's our back bearing. This is the next guy we want to get out of here. You get a snap ring here on the shaft. You get a big snap ring out here. Uh, again, uh, I see a lot of guys beat these out with hammers and stuff. Uh, we're gonna try and I try and show you how you don't need a sledgehammer to take this transmission apart. Uh, I see too many busted ones come in and, and stuff like that, and, and there's just no need for it. So uh, let me get that bearing prepped. I'll pull the snap rings. Nothing special about that, uh, and I'll show you what we uh, what we use to get that out of there. Okay guys, now the front bearing is out, we're going to go after this back bearing. Okay, there is a factory tool, uh, GM used, and, and most of the big uh, auto manufacturers use Kentmore or Miller for their tools. This is a Kentmore tool, uh, I got my bolts that are going to go in there. Uh, pressure screw. This uh, spreader here. This is just something that I made out of a uh, piece of one and a quarter, 4140. Uh, I milled some slots in it. Uh, I put some threads in it for a pressure screw. And I made it nice and sturdy. Uh, now going through this 465, I'll take you over to my tool crib here. Uh, these are the tools that you're going to see me using bearing installer these are for pressing the bushings onto the shafts um, there's a lot of different stuff here seal installers and um, there's a lot of different stuff and I'm gonna break this uh, rebuild down in into a bunch of parts uh, if anybody has any questions uh, we're doing one, one part at a time we'll, we'll take some stuff apart I'll show you the tools I use um, and it'll probably be, I don't know, maybe four or five parts of this. I don't want to make a real long video. Um, nobody seems to watch the long ones anyway. So we're going to keep them kind of short. We're going to hit the important parts. And if you're going to do more than one of these or you want to do a, a very good job on your 465, uh, tools like this are still readily available. Uh, GM dealerships all over the country. Um, or getting rid of their old stuff and you can find this stuff just about it you can find this stuff even at tag sales and um, stuff like that but if anybody has any questions about the tools uh, let me know but I'm gonna try and show them in detail here so what I did was remove the snap rings and that front bearing we just took off the shaft um, just go in the front there give it a couple light taps with a rubber hammer and you can see the groove sticks out a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to hook up our tool and, uh, and I'll try and show you uh, exactly how it works. Okay, so the tool has a groove in it there. And that's right here. That's what's going to bite into that snap ring. 
uh, groove. So you spread it and then you put it right over the groove. And tighten these screws down so it can't get off your snap ring groove. Uh, like I say, that's a nice thing about factory tools. Uh, they're designed to work and fit and, and that's got a super good grip on that right now. And then we're just going to set up um, our pulling unit. We're going to put our bolts through. Got to get some washers for those. And, uh, and we're going to put those through and then I'll show you the bearing coming out. Uh, let me just run and get some washers. Okay guys, we've got our tool set up on there and with this factory setup there's uh there there's there's no better way to do it. I mean there's there's you could put a bearing splitter on there or something, but it's kind of big. Uh it'll get in the way of things. Uh this factory tool, you can see the shape of it, it fits in there perfectly. So if you have an opportunity to get one, uh it'll make your life a lot easier. Now this will come out probably just with a couple little couple little hits of this it's just super easy okay I think you can see the bearing is just captured completely around there uh, doesn't get any easier than that like I say this stuff isn't necessary but does make it a lot easier and it keeps you from taking that hammer out all the time which I see way too much got those two bearings out in no time and those are the bearings that I see most guys have trouble with that front one especially uh, is terrible and uh, I'm just trying to show you guys you know the way it the way it was done in the factory and for not a lot of money you can you can probably find all those tools uh, you could sometimes go to a dealership and they don't even know what the hell they are and you can just grab them you know and they'll sell them to you or just give them to you but um, there's not many people you know in, in factory settings rebuilding 465s anymore so the tools are everywhere um, it pays to have them it'll make your life much much easier it'll make your rebuild go a lot smoother so that's just how I do it you know you guys could do it any way you like but I just want to get the information out there and show you guys maybe you've struggled with it before or maybe you're thinking of tackling a 465 um, I'll show you the tools the whole way through so hang in there we'll be right back okay guys with your front and rear bearings out you want your whole cluster sitting down in the bottom of the case and you can see we have that we're not centered anymore we're on the bottom of the case now we're going to go after our input shaft next and if you see the input shaft has a flat on it okay, you take that flat and you turn it all the way to the bottom and then what the factory had you do was just kind of tap this up and down up and down while pulling out and it slides out pretty easy it's not a super tight fit in there um, <clears throat> I just use a rubber mallet kind of tap it up and down while I'm pulling it out and that'll slide right out as long as that flat spot is on the bottom. So uh, we're going to go for this bearing and input shaft next. And uh, let me see if I can show you how that works out. Just gotta keep checking where your flat is there. Don't let that get away from you. They make a million tools to pull these apart, but they just had to kind of beat this front guy out. 
You can, if you want to cheat a little bit, put a bearing spreader on there and some long bolts and stuff and pull the bearing. Um, but the bearing is real tight on there. So we just keep making sure we're there. Okay, that'll pop right out. Okay, now as long as you have your flat on the bottom, you see that'll come right out. We'll pull our fourth gear blocking ring out now as well. It just goes right there. So that's three of our main bearings. Uh, next one we're going to go for is the back one on this uh, whole assembly of gears here. Okay, this is the guy we're going for next. And I'll show you how I get that one out. Okay guys, same setup here. I've got some longer bolts in there. Um, these are for a different transmission front when you're pulling the uh, front bearing out. But I think we'll have enough thread on there to pull this out. Let's check it out. Okay. And there. Is our rear bearing. You see it's firmly locked in there, easy to get out. Uh, again, the tool makes it super easy. So today, in just a few minutes, a few actual minutes, I mean, we've been talking and stuff about the 465, but um, uh, there's guys that'll spend half a day eating these bearings out, and uh, we, we were able to get it in just a couple minutes. And uh, if you take your time, um, and you have the tools, and you set up for it, and uh, uh, you can make stuff, or you can buy stuff, like I say, uh, just set up, take your time, be conscious of what you're doing, uh, keep an eye on your parts, make sure you get everything in the, uh, put away, like uh, you, so you know how to put it back together again and it uh, should go fairly easy for you. It's not a terribly difficult transmission to rebuild. Uh, it's big and heavy and uh, things can get away from you and if you don't have the right tools for putting those those bushings in that I'll show you um, next time we get on this um, uh, things can get difficult but like I say I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take this little by little so today basically was the first step we got all our main bearings out. Uh, I showed you how to do it, hopefully, safely and uh, without damaging anything. And uh, next time, we're going to pull the gears out. We're going to get into that. I'll show you how to separate them on the press. And uh, we'll get into some more new tools that you may or may not have ever seen. And uh, we'll take it from there. So, one step at a time. This is where we're going to leave it today. Um, <clears throat> if you have any suggestions or anything you want to see on the 465, let me know. Uh, put a comment below. Um, if you like the videos, uh, hit the like button. Tell a friend. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. And um, pretty soon we'll have the, uh, the Cummins here. That's on the way as we speak. Uh, I've got some um, uh, custom frame rails coming uh, f uh, to build the frame. So there's a lot going on, and on top of that, we're uh, we're finishing up some projects for uh, for customers. We've got some engine builds and some other things going on, but um, more stuff coming. Anything anybody would like to see, just put in the comments below. Otherwise, I will uh, catch you uh, next time. Thanks for watching, and uh, everybody be safe out there.